Antoine Winfield Jr. and Cade Otten headline our players of the game as the Buccaneers beat the Falcons to end their losing streak and move to three and two on the season. Let's go. You are locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko flying solo on this episode, but of course you can check out my co-host David Harrison and what he's doing over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. Check out my written work over at SB Nation's BucksNation.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at D Harrison82. Again, we thank you for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view every day. Today's episode of Locked On Bucks is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's pricepicks.com, promo code locked on. Cade Otten had himself a day and might be making a case to take over as the Bucks tight end one, but more on that in a moment. We're going to start things off with the top storylines of the game, beginning with that roughing the passer call on Grady Jarrett. Now, I dove into this quite a bit on the postcast, so I do recommend you go back and you listen to my thoughts on that. But after the game, Greg Allman asked referee Jerome Boger about the call, and Boger said, quote, what I had was the defender grabbed the quarterback while he was still in the pocket and unnecessarily throwing him to the ground. That is what I was making my decision based upon, end quote. NFL Network's Tom Pelissaro tweeted about Rule 12, Article 11B, that states, quote, when tackling a passer who is in a defenseless posture, e.g. during or just after throwing a pass, a defensive player must not unnecessarily or violently throw him down, end quote. Now, I am on record already as having said that that roughing the passer penalty on Jarrett was terrible. Tom Brady was not a defenseless player. He was in the pocket. He was not thrown maliciously to the ground. All in all, I personally believe that was a bad call. I'm also on record as saying the very play before that, Atlanta got away with a defensive pass interference. So you had one non-call that benefits Atlanta. Then you have one bad call that benefits Tampa. If the referees make that defensive pass interference call on that pass to Scotty Miller, the Bucs are first and 10 at the Atlanta 13-yard line, and none of this happens. So not saying that two wrongs make a right or anything in that sense, but there's only a couple of quarterbacks, again, in my opinion, that actually get that weak of a call. Tom Brady just happens to be one of them. I would say the others are probably, well, definitely Aaron Rodgers, and then probably Patrick Mahomes, maybe Josh Allen, but... Although Jerome Boger denied it, I also do think that a little bit of this is kind of an overreaction to what happened to Tua Tungavailoa of the Miami Dolphins. We saw him get knocked to the ground pretty hard against the Buffalo Bills, probably was concussed at that moment, then turns around, plays Thursday night, is thrown to the ground even more violently than Tom Brady was, Again, I thought it was a clean hit, but then we saw Tua get carted off the field, sent to a local hospital at the University of Cincinnati in an ambulance, and he is out for I'm not really sure how long. 
So maybe, maybe a little bit of overcorrection on the NFL's part to if there's even just a shred of doubt that it was roughing, throw the flag. Again, I could be way off base. That's just kind of the interpretation that I have uh, of the play. It was a bad call. The Bucs benefit. They end up winning the game. Yeah, if the shoe was on the other foot, I know a lot of Buccaneers fans would be very, very upset, but you take what you can get in this league. One of the other big stories, of course, was the loss of Carlton Davis, Sean Murphy Bunting, and Mike Edwards all in the second half of this game. Now, Carlton Davis, who started dealing with this hip injury against the Kansas City Chiefs you know, back in prime time in week four, left the game when that injury flared back up. He was out, replaced by Sean Murphy Bunting, who injured his quad. Sean Murphy Bunting, according to, I believe I saw Jenna Lane tweeted out, and, and I think that came from the Todd Bowles postgame presser, was that he's going to undergo testing on Monday to see the severity of the injury. Todd Bowles did say that Mike Edwards is fine. So I was very concerned about that in the postcast episode and talked about that's what Buccaneers fans should be worried about, not so much the two touchdowns that they gave up in the fourth quarter. So good news on Mike Edwards. Definitely have to monitor Carlton Davis and Sean Murphy bunting. Of course, the Bucs were already without Logan Ryan in this game with a foot injury. So it's nice to have the trio of safeties there, but Zion McCollum may be called upon to start coming up next week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, the Steelers are starting rookie quarterback Kenny Pickett. They have Deontay Johnson out there. They have Chase Claypool out there. They have George Pickens out there. They have some pass-catching weapons, and it could be a tall task for the rookie corner who has not gotten a lot of action this year, thanks in large part to a hamstring injury, to be tossed out on the field as a starter coming up next week. So definitely something to monitor. We're going to keep our eye on that and keep you updated throughout the week. Coming up, we are going to talk about how Mike Evans is still that dude and how he helped the Bucs snap a two-game skid to head into week six with a three and two record. But first, prize picks, big shout out to them. How does prize picks work, you ask? Well, you pick two to five players, and if they will score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing with other people. It's just you against the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you can watch, including the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, with their season getting ready to start, PGA, college football, men's and women's college basketball, soccer, the WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, even cricket, and so much more. They have safe and fast withdrawals and are currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Price Picks is going to give you 100. You deposit 75, 50, 20, 80. Price Picks is going to match it all the way up to $100. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every day. Make sure you check out NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL. Locked On's local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football, plus betting advice from the field's leading experts bet online. Follow NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked On NFL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. We're going to be handing out some game balls, including emerging rookie tight end Cade Otten. So make sure you stay tuned for all of those. But it's time to talk about the plays of the game. And I think the number one play of the game in this one was Mike Evans' 25-yard reception. He did leave following that catch 
Looks like he uh, roughed up his knee a little bit, similar to what we saw from Julio Jones in week one on that 40-plus yard reception he had against the Cowboys that ultimately led to a partial PCL tear. Evans was able to walk off the field under his own power, stayed on the sideline for a few plays, did come back, finish out the game, so all appears to be well there. But at that moment, it was third and three, at the Atlanta 37, it was still nothing to nothing. The Bucs had turned the ball over on downs and when they were in field goal range and had yet to score. So third and three, Tom Brady drops back, heaves the ball to Mike Evans, who makes an incredible outstretched catch on the tips of his fingers, brings the ball down and sets up what would become the first score of the game for the Buccaneers, it was a one-yard run by Leonard Fournette, an absolutely amazing play by Mike Evans, who continues to show that he is an elite receiver. My other play of the game, a little bonus play, since David isn't here to give his, Vita Vea coming up with a huge sack on third and 16 in the fourth quarter. Now, at this moment, the Bucs were up 21-7, to seven against the Falcons, and the Falcons were at their own 40-yard line. So a first down there, and the Falcons are knocking on the door of being in scoring position. This was in the middle of the string of three and outs that the offense was having. It was the possession after the Falcons had already put up their first touchdown of the game, and Vita Vea comes up with a huge sack on third and 16 to force the Falcons to punt. Even the commentators on Fox were talking about, if you can get a chunk, you're in territory now and in a situation where you go for it on fourth down. So even a six, eight yard completion there by Marcus Mariota doesn't necessarily force the punt for the Falcons. It was Vita Vea who created that opportunity for the defense to get off of the field. And one of the things that I want to talk about on the offensive side of the ball, I, I talked plenty about the three and outs issues on the immediate postcast. I want to talk about how they spread the ball around in this game. Brady completed passes to eight different receivers against the Atlanta Falcons, three of which had six or more receptions. Leonard Fournette was the team's leading receiver, both in receptions and in yards. He had 10 receptions for 83 yards. Chris Godwin, six catches on six targets. He looks like he's getting closer to 100%. But Cade Otten, six catches on seven targets for 43 yards. And it's starting to look like not only is the trust there between Tom Brady and Cade Otten, but Cade Otten made a real strong case on Sunday that he should be the Buccaneers' number one tight end. Even when Cameron Bray returns and clears the concussion protocol, it should be Cade Otten that is out there for the majority of the snaps. He should be running the majority of the routes for the tight ends, and he should be receiving a vast majority of the targets they go to the tight end position. I know we talked about Kyle Rudolph and the things that he can bring to this offense. We've seen what Cameron Brake can do for this offense, but Cade Otten was the Buccaneers draft pick for a reason. And David and I have both talked endlessly about how Cade Otten, if he's not injured during the draft process, probably goes much higher in the draft, might have even been the number one tight end taken off the board. So Kate Otten is starting to show exactly why he would have been up in that conversation. And he helps the offense. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. His ability to bring the ball in his, his trust that Tom Brady has in him is showing that the Buccaneers have a new weapon on the offensive side of the ball because the tight end has been a non-factor this year. Coe Keeft had like one really cool catch. Cameron Brait, he's kind of been invisible. Kate Otten up until this point, kind of invisible. I, I believe his, his career high in receptions was either three or four heading into this game. He is going to become a force if the Buccaneers continue to utilize him to this level 
in the passing game and he takes over as that number one guy. I love Cam Braid. I do. But Kate Otten is better. And I think most of you will agree with that. Not only that, but if he becomes a viable threat week after week, that's going to continue to open things up for Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, the deep balls to Scotty Miller on Sunday. Hopefully Julio comes back, but you take a look at, at how this Buccaneers offense performed for most of the game. If Cade Otten is the kind of guy that defenses now have to be concerned about, don't worry about Julio Jones anymore. Let him sit, let him rest. He's not going to recover fully from the injury that he has by the time the playoffs roll around, but he's going to be a lot closer and he's going to be a, a lot bigger of a weapon if he gets that time to rest. But you only get that if you start to have a tight end come out and be a new threat for the defense to be concerned about. Because up until the Falcons game, tight end wasn't a position that any defense was worried about. They, they zoned in on the wide receivers. They zoned in on Leonard Fournette. Now you have the emergence of Rashad White coming through, and you're starting to see the uptick for Cade Auden. That really, really has to continue and it's going to make this Buccaneers offense more potent and more recognizable compared to the last two years. So Kate Otten is going to receive one of our game balls for his performance on Sunday, but I'm going to tell you who else stepped up and is going to get some love as well coming up in just a moment. But first, if you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There is a new flavor. Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite flavor, the cookie dough chunk puff. They are light, have a nice chewy texture, and real cookie dough chunks. Of course, like all Built Bars, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. It's all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, and it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein. What's great about Built is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15 and get 15% off your order. Again, promo code locked on 15, all one word, L O C K E D O N, number one, number five, for 15% off at built.com. Wrapping things up here on a victory Monday on the Locked On Bucks podcast. And it is time to hand out the game balls for this one. My player of the game, if you haven't figured it out already, Cade Otten. Six receptions on seven targets for 43 yards. Two of his catches went for a first down. I'm going to go ahead and say that actually three of them resulted in a first down. If you go back and remember when the Buccaneers turned it over on downs, the Bucs challenged the spot of the ball on that Cade Otten catch. He had enough for the first down. Instead, they opt to go for it, run the ball with Leonard Fournette. He comes up short and the Falcons take over. But a coming out party for Cade Otten, you absolutely love to see it. I'm excited to hear what David thinks about Otten's performance. But I know David's going to be real excited about the next game ball that I am handing out. It was his predictive player of the game, and that is Antoine Winfield Jr. This guy was all over the place. He was coming on blitzes. He was shutting down the run game. Antoine Winfield Jr. led the team with eight tackles. He had two tackles for loss, a sack, and a pass defense. Absolutely fantastic game out of Winfield. And David talked about how it was going to be kind of on Antoine Winfield Jr. to really shut down Drake London in this one because a lot of Drake London's production is going to come over the middle or sitting down in those zone coverages. Drake London finished for with seven targets, four receptions, and 35 yards. A real quiet day for London, and that is thanks in large part to what Antoine Winfield Jr. was doing out there on the field. Finally, 
my last game ball. All right. You can dish it out to me in the comments, dish it out to me in the voicemails and in the email. I'll eat my crow. Scotty Miller, four receptions on seven targets, 35 yards, exact same stat line that I just read off for Drake London, but he was a bigger impact player for the Bucs than Drake London was for the Atlanta Falcons. He had a couple of key first down plays. He should have drawn a pass interference there in the fourth quarter that I've already kind of talked about. The play after was when the Bucs got that roughing the passer call. They gave him the free first down. But it, it looks like Scotty Miller starting to get a little bit more into the swing of things. He was a game day inactive last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now he comes out there and Tom Brady is not afraid to throw him the ball. Scotty was running routes over the middle, moving the sticks, making low catches, was targeted on a couple of deep balls one of which was in the end zone, and it was a little underthrown. If that ball is thrown the way it was in Lambeau in the 2020 NFC Championship, Scotty Miller, we're talking about having a touchdown of over 50 yards. So Scotty Miller played an absolutely outstanding game, and uh, I'll take the heat, I'll eat the crow, all of that good, fun stuff. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to continue to talk about the fallout from the Bucks' victory over the Atlanta Falcons. David will be back to give his thoughts. We're going to have our stash it and trash it, all that good fun stuff. So make sure you tune back in for tomorrow's episode on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We thank you for making the Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. If you have reactions to the game, thoughts, questions, anything at all, of course, you know you can call us at 813-444-5841, leave a voicemail, or if you're old-fashioned and just want to send it an email, Locked on Bucks podcast at gmail.com. Check out all of my work over at BucksNation.com. Check out David's over at BucksGameDay.com. And of course, follow along on Twitter at Locked on Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire those cannons. And we thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.